Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. And today, just when we thought Apple was wrapping up iOS 10.2's beta lifecycle, the company pulled a fast one and released the sixth beta to register developers and the corresponding public beta for those enrolled in the public beta testing program. Now, what happened? I mean, last week, it seemed like we were at the absolute end of iOS 10.2 beta releases because Apple issued two back to back, one on Monday, one on Friday, and the build numbers closely matched that of public firmwares, meaning they were shorter in length, which does indicate a public or a GM gold master release. So let's get into exactly what's going on right now. First of all, opening up Safari here, we're just on Apple's developer portal. And when we go ahead and scroll down, you'll notice that we do have iOS 10.2 beta 6 released today, December 5th, 2016. And we actually have two build numbers, 14C90 and 14C91, depending on your device. Again, still shorter build numbers, which does mean that we are still at the end of iOS 10.2's beta life cycle. However, we just don't know when Apple's finally going to give in and release the public version. I'm sure they want iOS 10.2 to be as absolutely stable as possible because this is a huge release, but why the rush with build numbers? Why not keep them longer like beta releases? Well, let's actually go ahead and talk about iOS 10.2 beta 6 for a second before we go into iOS 10.2. 2's features in general. It seems as though Beta 6 adds a number of other single sign-on services for Apple's iOS 10.2 exclusive feature, again, which is related to the TV application. And this move actually could have been predicted because earlier today, Apple made a section inside of the App Store exclusive to those on iOS 10.2 beta releases. That's essentially a list of applications that make use of the single sign-on feature. Apps for different TV stations that again, support the brand new feature. And now Apple has added additional support for said feature, meaning that these latest partners potentially could have come into the scene or into the fray at the last minute and they wanted to ensure that everything was functioning properly before they rolled it out, hence this extra beta release. Again though, we just don't know whether this is going to be the last beta as iOS 10.2 beta 6 has shown us anything is possible and they may still want to test additional features before pushing it out to the public. So let's briefly get into what iOS 10.2 in general is going to offer before focusing again on the sixth beta. We're kind of going to loop back to it. So essentially 10.2 adds three new wallpapers exclusive for the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus models. The same graphics that were used when unveiling the devices. We now have a new preserve camera setting inside of the settings application that essentially keeps the camera on the same mode it was on previously before exiting it if you exit and reopen it with the setting toggled on. We have brand new emoji thanks to the Unicode 9.0 update and said emoji are also coming in Mac OS 10.12.2 and watch OS 3.1.1. Beyond the new ones though, there are several stylistic changes to pre-existing emoji. We now have the brand new send with love and celebration full screen message effects inside of messages. We have the new TV app, of course, settings that correspond to the TV app inside of the settings app and a widget. Also, again, single sign-on support for watching live TV via certain applications. We now have new music sorting options as well as shuffle and repeat inside of music when listening to Apple Music, finally. We have a new headphone icon that appears in the status bar for when Bluetooth audio devices are connected. And Beta 5 was issued actually to correct a lock screen bypass issue that iDevice helped discovered and submitted, as well as the video crash complication. Remember when we did a video recently, actually not too long ago, on the specific video that actually causes any iDevice that watches it to crash? If you happen to miss that, because it's pretty cool, definitely check it out. Again, it still works on the latest public firmware as of recording this video, iOS 10.1.1, and it has no long-term negative ramifications on your device. So again, check it out if you're interested. But what about the sixth beta, what was actually released 
today. Well, as I said toward the beginning of this video and before we went over iOS 10.2's changes in general, it really just adds additional single sign-on support for CenturyLink, Prism, DirecTV, Dish, GTA, Hawaiian Telecom, Hotwire, and Sling TV. That's it. I mean, there are no other outward facing changes whatsoever that the sixth beta brings to the table. Again, this is likely just because some of these guys probably signed on at the last minute and they probably weren't intending to add them to iOS 10.2 but they figured they would expand iOS 10.2's beta life cycle at least by one more beta release, pushing it back to the sixth beta, and of course, also in turn, pushing back the public release now to an unforeseen time. Because this is unprecedented, we have no clue when iOS 10.2 is going to be released. I mean, if we look at things from a logical standpoint, the best possible scenario is that they release it next week. However, they could stray from logic once again and continue to push it back. This is just getting absolutely frustrating at this point, especially because we know that jailbreak developers are most likely targeting iOS 10.2. So let's get into that briefly. I'm not going to delve too much into iOS 10.2 and jailbreaking right now. If you want additional jailbreak information, definitely check out my dedicated playlist on the subject linked down below in the description. So essentially iOS 10.2 may very well be the firmware that jailbreak developers, Pangu, end up targeting, specifically because of all of the new features it brings to the table. See, iOS 10.2 went into beta stages most likely when Pangu was wrapping up development on the first iOS 10 jailbreak, and they figured due to all of the new features that iOS 10.2 brings to the table that a number of individuals would like to update to iOS 10.2, therefore significantly narrowing the targetability of a new jailbreak. If they were to release one for iOS 10.1.x, of course they'd be limiting themselves because before 10.2 dropped, Apple would inevitably patch the jailbreak in said firmware, again effectively rendering it useless for anyone who wanted to update to iOS 10.2. And remember, Pangu banks on as many people being able to jailbreak for as long as possible. They are financial partners with 25PP, who in turn is owned by Alibaba, an absolutely massive company. So these things need to be timed precisely. And unfortunately, that means we as the end users have to wait. But remember guys, jailbreak developers are doing this for free. We don't have to pay a single cent for jailbreaks and it takes them hundreds of hours to actually get things functioning properly. And if they take a few extra weeks or even an extra month or two to release a jailbreak, I myself am personally fine with that because I want them to actually make their jailbreak as stable as possible. And I also want it to function on the latest public firmware at the time of its release. If they released it for iOS 10.1.x, then of course 10.2 would just drop a few weeks later and render it all useless and the wait would once again start for an iOS 10.2 plus jailbreak. So there are a lot of things that go into play here. And remember, every time Apple releases something new or does something, it impacts the jailbreak one way or another. And unfortunately, this time Apple is probably inadvertently delaying the jailbreak. They're almost certainly not doing this intentionally, guys. They just want to ensure that iOS 10.2 with all of its new features is as stable as possible. And in turn, Pangu wants to do the same for their jailbreak. They want it to be as stable as possible and function on as many devices for as long as possible. So it's kind of a cat and mouse game here, but it's also a game with themselves, ensuring that things are finalized before they're actually released. So that kind of wraps everything up that I want to discuss in today's video. If you want to be updated or notified more frequently, such as when I release new jailbreak updates, or if the situation changes, definitely click the subscribe button below next to my channel name, because I will let you guys know anytime anything happens in the realm of iOS and jailbreaking. And also just be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter for even more frequent updates. Remember guys, the situation is always in flux and new things happen every day. And I'm going to always provide you guys with an up-to-date analysis of the situation, whether you guys like it or not. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. So keep that in mind. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.